Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Ben Sheen, I'm one of the managing editors here at Stratfor, and with me today is Stratfor's Roger Baker to discuss relations between China and South Korea. So Roger, at the moment China is reaching out to South Korea to resolve a potential issue in the LOC surrounding the, the island of Iado. I guess my question is, what is the island and why is it important in relations between the two countries? So very different than some of the other island disputes that we hear about a lot in the South China Sea or uh, the question of who owns the Senkaku Islands or Tokno Island, Iado is actually just a seamount. So it's never above water except in extreme storms. It's normally about 4.6 meters below the surface. And so in some ways it's not a place that will determine borders, but it is a place that is a question of where they're going to put the maritime border. The South Koreans several years ago decided to assert that it was theirs and they built a raised platform on it. It has a helipad, it has some monitoring equipment to be able to look at weather and look at the oceans. The Chinese uh, claim it within their territory, however, as well. Now, as we've seen, not only in the LOC, but the South China Sea, territorial disputes have become very rigorous over the last few years and in, since time immemorial. What is China's position now? Are they going to push this hard or are they going to try and concede to improve their relation with Seoul? So a few years ago when China expanded its uh, air defense identification zone, it ended up overlapping over top of Yodo. And the South Koreans responded by expanding their ADIS as well. The Chinese were a little bit caught off guard by the strength of the South Korean response. The ADIS was only one part of it. There was a pretty strong political uh, outcry as well from South Korea. And so in discussions between the Chinese and the South Korean presidents, they decided that they would re-engage in the overall maritime border. Now for China, working with South Korea is actually a very interesting thing. On the one hand, resolving a border issue with South Korea may be somewhat easier. Again, we don't have the island dispute. We don't have some of the same historical animosities that we have in other parts of the region. And secondarily, China has been using its warming relation with South Korea to in part undermine the potential for a stronger US-Japan-South Korea defense cooperation in the region that could constrain the Chinese. So clearly China is playing power politics here. What does South Korea have to gain? So South Korea in this case would be able to firmly assert that this is their territory. They would be happy to gain uh, a recognition of where that maritime border is. It matters also for things like fishing. So there are occasional conflicts between Chinese fishing boats and the South Korean Coast Guard. Uh, just a few days ago, not right around this area, but in another part of the Yellow Sea, uh, there was a brief shooting incident between the Chinese and the South Koreans in regards to fishing. So it can add a little bit more security in that space. Um, in addition, this helps to lock down where the southern maritime border is for the South Koreans. And they're looking at this as a way to expand where they're patrolling. And that helps them in part because the North Koreans, if they move from their west coast to their east coast, actually come down and around through this area and the South Koreans can monitor them better. Are we expecting any response from the United States? Because clearly Washington has a vested interest in, in stability in the region. It's very hard for the United States to interfere in what would be a bilateral peaceful resolution of a maritime boundary in the region. So in, in some ways, the U.S. doesn't really have a lot to say in this. Um, and the South Koreans certainly are not going to draw in the U.S. assistance. And the other hand, the U.S. is going to be watching very closely to see how the overall South Korea-Chinese relationship evolves. Brilliant. And a final question I feel compelled to ask. There's a degree of folklore associated with Iodo. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So Iodo fits within some of the, the folklore or the legends of the fishermen in, in Jeju Island, which is the large uh, southern island off the tip of South Korea. And in part, it is sort of the place where the spirits of the deceased fishermen go to live. And so it, it does fit into some of that aspect of, of social and cultural uh, elements with South Korea, much stronger than it does uh, with anything that the Chinese may assert. Well, that's fantastic. Roger, thank you so much for explaining this today. For more on that subject and many more in Asia Pacific, please continue to read stratfor.com.